Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn and this is the Corsair 5000D Airflow. This is a video on installing the case with just two fans. Now I did a video previously on a setup of this case with the most amount of fans possible, minus one. I installed this case with 12 fans. You can actually install up to 13 potentially. Six mounted on the front and side as intake and another six on the top on the all-in-one cooler with a push-pull setup. You could also have one on the rear. But as standard, Corsair ships this case with just two fans. Two 120 mil air guide fans. You can't purchase those fans separately. But one thing that's interesting is that Corsair claims that those two fans are enough to keep your case cool and running in a good way. That front fan is in the right position to pull the air through the front and over your graphics card and CPU and then the rear one at the back exhausting the hot air out. So what I wanted to do was to test out whether this was true or not. So after I'd had all those other fans installed I set about removing them all and reinstalling the original air guide fans so here you can see me with it in the setup process initially where i took that rear fan off and the front one and i set it up instead with ml120 pro fans on the side and front but then i wanted to experiment and test that i've done separate videos on the original setup and also with a gpu mounted vertically so i've got lots of temperature readings in various different ways and benchmarks but now i'm going to use these air guide fans now these are said to be be anti-vortex fans that have fins that direct the air in a concentrated flow and in a way that will keep your case cool. What's odd about them is that you can't purchase them separately and individually from Corsair. So even if you like the look of them, you can't fill your case with them. You can only really have those two fans that they ship with it, which for me is a bit of a strange aesthetic to have just two fans, especially on a case that you could fit three on the front of. It looks a bit odd. However, if you purchase the case and want to know whether it will be able to perform with just these two fans carry on watching because I'm about to show you and talk about that now it's interesting because these fans are also not RGB so there's no RGB lighting the setup process is also really easy because they come pre-attached to this PWM controller which is a fan speed controller that you can plug into the PWM capable header on your motherboard and then control the fan speed of via your motherboard software now, it's already plugged in so all you need to do is plug it into your motherboard and plug it into SATA power and then basically they're away. Now I've said that I'm installing two fans on this obviously I still have to have the fans on the all-in-one cooler and I don't have any other cooler that I could use to demonstrate it but that it does just mean I have three fans set to exhaust on the top so I'm not technically pulling any extra cold air in all I'm doing is exhausting the hot air that's potentially in there. I originally set up this all-in-one cooler with six fans in it but when I set up the rear fan, I realized that I had to reposition this all in one. And that meant moving the radiator the other way around, which as you can see resulted in a problem with the pipes because they're a bit short. So they sort of run over the ram. You can also see I couldn't screw in all the screws on top, but you note that I've removed the three fans on top. So I'm trying to minimize the impact to that all in one will have on the test and here is the end result plugged in and ready to go gpu's back in its standard position after my vertical testing and i'm now running it with that front fan and the rear one as you can see running here exhausting the air out then what i wanted to do is run it through the same benchmarks and general use testing that i'd done previously to see how it handled it all and be able to test whether that was good enough now you can see from the position in theory that front fan should be blowing air, nice cold air over the GPU and hopefully keeping that cool. Obviously the GPU itself has fans on it as well that are gonna be cooling it down. So there is some potential for this to work well. I also, as a point of reference, don't have the rear cable management bracket installed and that's simply because I couldn't get it back in when the motherboard was there. So I'm not trying to game the system, but perhaps if you're gonna do this setup, you might like to take that management bracket out as well because as you can see that opens up the rear there are no fans there anymore so there's nothing to bring air in from that direction but perhaps some might naturally flow through in an ambient way and potentially cool it down a bit more so you need to take that in mind as i go through these now i set this up and i ran a number of different tests with 3d mark heaven benchmark and other software 
and I was surprised with the results, I'll be honest. So for a standard reference, using Heaven in the standard setup previously with all those fans, I was getting about 68 degrees centigrade with a GPU and somewhere between 60 and 68 with the CPU. With just two fans installed, I was getting 70 degrees with the GPU and 50 degrees with the CPU. So actually hotter on the GPU, but cooler on the CPU. Time Spy stress test and the original setup was 69 degrees centigrade. And I got the same result with the two fans set up as well. And I did the same with Time Spy Extreme and it was 68 degrees in the 12 fan setup and 69 degrees centigrade with the just two fans installed on the case. And the same for Time Spy Ultra, where I got 69 degrees originally and then 74. Now, I also ran Cyberpunk with some real world testing. I was running Cyberpunk 2077, as you can see here on Samsung's Odyssey G9 at maximum resolution with maximum graphic -y goodness on it. And you'll see that the results were pretty decent. I was getting about 45 FPS, pretty standard for that. So it's pretty taxing game. But I actually found that I was getting somewhere between 63 and 73 degrees centigrade on the graphics card and about 76 degrees centigrade on the CPU. So although toasty, nowhere near as hot as I was expecting it to be. And so the end result is actually surprising in that you can run this case with those two fans and get good performance. Now, obviously this is gonna vary depending on what all-in-one cooler you have installed. Maybe you go for a smaller one. Maybe if you had an air cooler on your CPU instead, you might get different results. But I think what it shows is if you got this case and you didn't wanna splash out loads of money immediately on extra fans, you could actually run it with the air guide fans and get some decent performance. Really interesting and it shows a very nice design from Corsair in terms of airflow and a real simple, easy setup immediately as well. Hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out my other related content on the 5000D, which I'll link to in the description and on the RTX 3080 from MSI included here and the Elite Capelix as well, which is a fantastic cooler, which also, as a side note, runs at a zero RPM mode where the fans don't even spin if they're not required, resulting in a very quiet case indeed. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you found it useful, interesting, hilarious, or all of the above. Be sure to check out the description for other information you might find interesting and subscribe and watch these other videos as well that I think might be useful to you and have a great life.